Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mind Rock and SMP. Put deeply into my eyes. Um, we are back for another episode, and as you can see, we've uh, made a few upgrades. No longer in our partial iron armor and, you know, a little enchantments. Uh, let's take a look at the gear that we got, and we can take a look at the work that we've done in between episodes. Alright, well, as you can see, we, uh... Picked up some enchanted items here. Took quite a bit of uh, XP gathering and book trading and uh, armor collection. We actually had a nice death in between episodes as well, where we had actually already gotten all these things once and then lost it due to dying in the nether. So uh, yeah, this was a good good time. Um, but everything is fully enchanted. It's got mending, unbreaking, protection. Uh, you know, all the nice features. We also have everything here except not back, which is fine. We've got Silk Touch and Fortune. Silk Touch Axe. Don't really need a Fortune Axe. Uh, Silk Touch Shovel and a Fortune Shovel because with things like Gravel, if you use a Fortune Shovel, you will get Flint every single time. Uh, so you want to have one of each just in case. We do have our Elytra here. We bought this from Tyrafiki. Uh, he runs the end store. Um, so pick that up from there. Um, and we do have some totems of undying. Uh, we picked those up from Wildies. He runs the raid store, so he's got totems and some enchanted books and armor and things like that. Um, emeralds, but totems are probably the biggest thing that he's going to sell from there. Um, but let's take a look here at what we have done. We are sitting on some shulkers. I actually have a shulker box here that has lots of shulker shells because we are going to need them because we have started our store. Uh, this is the just a, a little one because people needed lava. Didn't really need any of the blocks and stuff yet, but mostly lava. We had some here, so we were selling nine buckets for one diamond. Uh, I think I'm just gonna get rid of this altogether because in the most part, people are gonna need a lot of them. So what we'll do is we're gonna sell the full shulker box and the box for four diamonds. So they'll get 27 buckets of lava plus a shulker box for four diamonds. Um, that means that they can do a hundred items per bucket of lava for smelting. And so that gets them 2,700 smeltable items for four diamonds. I feel like that's a pretty good price on there. At least it's, you know, it's not like it's cheap, but it's not super expensive. It's fair. Um, I did add a third layer here to the sugarcane farm. Uh, I needed lots and lots and lots of paper because I like to fly around everywhere. So there's my elytra. Um... Uh, we did some breeding and stuff like that. We've got, that's what we did for our book trading. We've got more spruce. We've got some dark oak, finally. Bamboo. There's a couple of spruce trees right over there. Haven't really tried for oak or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to leave that in the video so Sammy sees this. Uh, hi, Sammy. Uh, Will looks like he's very happy to come tell you that your build is dumb, but if you really want, I can come tell you as well. Uh, as you can see here, we have some villagers. Uh, this is a temporary setup, you know, nothing too crazy. I just, I really needed it for the armor, for the tools, the books, um, uh, stuff like that. Uh, let me let her, <laughs> just let her know that, um, so, but we were able to get you know, most of our enchantments and stuff here. Uh, we do have uh, Guru who sells enchanted books and things like that, but I just didn't have the time to go and collect diamonds and, and stuff like that right in the beginning. Um, but uh, I'm getting distracted by reading her chat. Um, We've gone over to Guru a few times now and picked up a few books just because I didn't want to keep trading with the villagers. I'm going to keep villagers just so we can make an iron farm, which is what we're going to do here today. Uh, just something very simple and small just so we have some iron generating because we are going to need a lot of it, especially because we do buckets of lava because I'm not expecting people to return the buckets or the boxes or anything. So I'm just going to constantly keep needing iron. Um, and Boom has them for a pretty good price, but at the, again, at the same time, it'll just depend on how much is being bought, if I really need to utilize the farm or not. If I have plenty of, uh, diamonds coming in, then it won't matter as much. Um, but we have started our store here. Uh, we are going to work on our sign for the store, 
just so everybody can kind of find it because I know it blends in quite a bit with the mountain. Um, we might change up some of these blocks here. I just made something very, very basic, but this is Stone Depot. Um, I did create lava doors for the entrance. Uh, it's a very basic setup. This is a sticky piston. This is an observer. And this is two dispensers with buckets of lava in it. Uh, I press the button, pushes the piston up. The observer fires a redstone signal into the dispenser, which powers these two blocks here. And then they pour the lava down. You press it again, turns it off. So this is what it looks like when it's flowing. I thought it looked kind of nice. Um, but you come in here, this is our light source. We have our lava wall up there is going to be the, uh, lava shelves. So that way people can go up there and pick up their shulkers of lava. If they want them, they will be inside double chests. So, and then down here, we're going to make some shelves and stuff like that. We're going to be able to have like shulkers of cobblestone and stone. I'm probably going to sell these, uh, even I'm going to pick up uh, deep slate and stuff like that too. Um, but we're probably going to sell those by the shulker as well. Cause I have a feeling if people are biting buying building materials they'll probably need quite a bit we have a few mega builders here on the server um and you know might as well let them have a, a full amount for a decent price that way you know they can either overbuy and have more than enough and stuff like that um over here where i flatten the area i think this is where we're gonna put our iron farm i'm debating just putting it over there where I've got those villagers now, but I kind of want to make sure that I can set a base or something over there without messing with the uh, layout of the villagers and stuff like that by putting like blast furnaces and composters and stuff like that. That'll mess with the jobs in here. Um, but I've got two villagers in here. Hello guys. Uh, we'll breed up some villagers that way we have enough going on for um the farm to produce um if you've never made an iron farm before it's very basic i'm like we will need 10 villagers we will need 20 beds and we will need a special spawnable area for the iron golems to show up to where they will get pushed into a trap and be um dismissed by lava which we will then collect the iron from their dismissal uh they will be uh, uh fired um anyways we don't talk about that um gonna head back over here for right now the other thing that we need to work on is a cobblestone generator now i know i said that i will be selling stone and things like that um i don't want to take the time to make a stone generator though I, I know that there's so many designs out there and that's fine but a cobblestone generator is so basic um i'm not gonna build it on stream or in recording for you guys um but uh I, i'll go over the basic mechanics of it after i have it built um, but basically we're just going to set up something very simple and then because we are the lava guy as well it's easy enough for us to go ahead and just um, smelt up the cobblestone to stone and the stone to smooth stone and, and go from there with it. it it really won't take a lot of work to do that just because we're already going and collecting the lava a few more buckets to smelt our own items is not going to be that bad um, i don't even know if i'm going to make a lava farm let me show you why. All right, let me. Uh, we're going to go into the nether here in a second. I'm going to show you the area that I set up. That way I can get lava. Let's see. This is not my. Hello, this is not my portal. They're so annoying. Ah. Uh, okay, go back over to my portal. I'm not wearing my Elytra, I just tried to fly. Um, let's see here. So this is the, this is my usual portal. I, I just have it out here in the open. I didn't really mind or want to barricade it off. But, uh, as you can see here, I have made a trail of the warped fungus because when you tick off one of the hoglins, if they get near the warped fungus, they will stay away from you. So I can just keep running along this path, basically of the warped fungus and no hoglins are going to bother me nice and easy. Um, but we go this way, and as you can see, there's a nice lake there beneath us. 
And what we've been doing, as you can kind of see from the flow of the lava here, uh, that's cute. <laughs> All right, got the uh, fungus on a stick and everything. Okay, um, but what you can see here is that we've just been taking the buckets and we are just constantly scooping this up. I, I think there's enough lava here for me to go quite a while without needing to make a farm of any kind. I'll just continue to scoop up and I, I stand on the edge and I scoop way down and everything. So we, we're good, we, we, we got enough. Uh, let's head back up because I'm not lava collecting right now. But we will go up and first things first, we're gonna make our cobblestone generator, get that taken care of and going that way um, off camera, I can uh, mine away on the cobblestone and be good to go there. And then um, we're gonna build the iron farm second. So we'll have two projects in this video just cause I, I've done quite a bit without recording. Um, and I wanna make sure I include you guys in what we're doing. Uh, I appreciate the comments and liking the video, the subscriptions, everything, you guys are great. Um, let's head back over. We're gonna start working on our cobblestone generator. And we'll get going. Uh, oh, let me show you guys. That's not it. I, uh, I like to dye the uh, shulker boxes to kind of match what I'm doing with them. There's stone here. I didn't realize how purple the purple was gonna be just because shulkers are already purple. Um, but this is gonna have like ice and snow. This will have ores in it, not diamonds or emeralds, but lapis, redstone, uh, quartz, um, glowstone, stuff like that. This just has a whole bunch of nether rack and other type of just nether blocks that I wanted to get out of storage boxes over here. Um, hostile mob drops, food, wood. This is specifically spruce, just cause that's what I was mining over and over and over again. Now I've got some of the dark oak and stuff like that. So I'll get other boxes set up and everything like that. Um, but first things first, I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to clear out a nice little uh, working area. Uh, maybe just make a small stone workshop over here and we can go ahead and set up our cobblestone generator it's not going to be very big so we don't have a lot to do so let's get started okay and here's pretty much all of the items that you will need for the design that i'm going to go with for the cobblestone generator uh, five buckets of lava five buckets of water uh five stairs because you're going to be able to waterlog these stairs some building blocks, they don't have to be deep slate. It, I just like how deep slate looks, but you can go with whatever you want to do. You're going to want at least one wood block just to be safe. I always put wood at the very back of it just so there's no way that I could possibly mine through. Even though you can only mine five blocks away, I like the redundancy of it. Um, five hoppers to be able to put underneath the actual generated stone. And then the number of rails kind of depends on your setup. Uh, these are the rails that I had on me right now, uh, but this will just let me use the minecart with hopper um, to be able to pull the um, cobblestone out of these hoppers here and move it towards a couple of chests and things like that without me having to run away or worry about getting backlogged. Um, I always recommend to bring some extra blocks with you just so you don't run out. You can make more hoppers, you can you know, put a few more blocks around, stuff like that. You can bring a stone cutter, that way you're not wasting stone in the crafting table. Um, I also need redstone, which... Just there we go. That was there the whole time. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, here we have our very simple cobblestone generated design. Uh, let me walk you through it a little bit here. So it is a five block wide by seven block deep uh, box, basically. And on this side, we're gonna have put down buckets of lava. On this side, we're gonna put down buckets of water. Important to put down the water first. Um, these hoppers are gonna pick up the blocks that we break. And here's the back again. We, we should never be able to hit this, but you just wanna make sure that you don't end up breaking your farm for any reason. There, there could be a glitch. Somehow you could move forward because the hopper's right here. So just better safe than sorry. Um, under the hopper here, so you can see is that we have a powered rail back there. 
Um, just some regular uh, rails going this way. So the minecart hopper is gonna go back and forth and back and forth. And here we have a uh, powered rail that we can shoot back and forth. Um, that way, and we have a lever down here, that way we can, you know, if we, if we don't want the minecart flowing anymore, we can shut it off. Um, but this is just gonna go back and forth. So here, I'll show you this. See? So that's just gonna run back and forth. And as these hoppers are collecting blocks, that minecart hopper is just gonna help to move it. Uh, there is some hoppers along the rail here. I don't wanna, well, let me see. Get the block. Yeah, I got the block. There's two hoppers right there, as you can see. So the back one there feeds into this one, and this one feeds over. And you can see there's a nice, you know, trap door here, just kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, this uh, the hopper line feeds over to the chest here, which gives me my blocks back. Um, I'll just pick up the blocks from there. So basically, we have it where these hoppers, each of these can hold five stacks. The minecart hopper can hold five stacks, and then. A double chest of blocks so at no point should we be able to afk without either breaking our pickaxe or like running out of storage space basically um the i i know this is bedrock you can't afk afk but you can uh all you have to do is find something that will lean on the uh left click of your mouse and you can sit here and you can just mine away uh so but let's see here this guy's running this guy's running so let's go ahead we're gonna put down our buckets of water and let's see five let's do this first so already we're gonna waterlog these stairs we've got one two three four and five okay we're gonna Send these back in here. And then now for the lava. Got one, two, three, four, and five. See, as you can see there, it was generating pretty much almost instantly as we put it down. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna mine here. We don't have to use silk touch, you can use fortune because it's cobblestone, it doesn't really make a difference. We could use two pickaxes before we really have to worry about it. But as you can see here with efficiency five, like we are going to lose some blocks of the lava every now and then but after i don't know we'll give this 20 seconds this is basically going to start insta mining and insta break or insta building and insta breaking because we have efficiency five so we're going to be not even able to get to the end half the time so let's see here what happens with i don't know just a 30 seconds of mining away as you can see, there was a whole bunch of them falling over into the lava there. That's going to happen. It, it just is. They'll never have a 100% a um, drop rate farm just because, the, for whatever reason, you know, you can mine a block and it can shoot in the complete opposite direction of you, uh, which makes absolutely no sense. So, uh, there. So we did some farming there you can see we got a couple blocks up here again you're, you're gonna lose yeah we even picked up a few blocks ourselves um you're gonna lose some blocks that's just it, it happens it's okay um over to our chest here look at that a whole stack just like that oh look we're still going plus what i picked up stack and a half we're still going uh, we're still going so you know 30 seconds we got two stacks so w we've got plenty of space we've you know we could always add a a backup chest if we need to we could add a shulker loader and unloader if we really wanted to get crazy with it um we can put half of these into a, a smelting line that way you know they're turning into stone and, you know smooth stone and stuff like that but it, it's it's that easy you know to have a stone generator so if you're playing on a vanilla world and you don't want to have to you go and mine for blocks all the time. You want to make something that's at your base and easy to use. Boom, piece of cake. Uh, you're playing in a sky block world and you get access to lava and water. You can make this only one block deep. Just again, make sure you have wood or something that you can't insta mine behind it. And boom, you're good to go. Even with one lava source, you can make it three across because you put the lava source in the middle and it'll affect the two on the side of it. I prefer to have lava sources along all parts because then you don't have to worry about the flow changing for whatever reason. Again, it, it bedrock or like 
know, we call it bug rock. Um, but uh, this is this is fairly simple. We're, we're gonna have access to. See, it stops right there. We're gonna have access to infinite cobblestone, infinite stone. Um, we can put a little box around us right here. You know, that way mobs can't get to us. We can add a, a little doorway with an actual door. That way, if it does turn to night for, you know, and, and nobody else is here to sleep, we can just keep going. This isn't something that you want to AFK overnight because, again, your pickaxe is going to run out of durability. So you want to keep a close eye on it. But this is one of the best little farms you can do. Nice and easy. You know, very compact. It can, the, the whole thing fits right here. So I didn't have to go and terraform a whole place. It's just, you know, this isn't the prettiest, you know, and I can change up some of these for, you know, design blocks and stuff like that, which I probably will here in a moment. Okay, so I'd like to note that I made a few changes with the process here. It was going just a little too slow with how it was coming out of the hopper mine cart and going into the double chest. Um, so what I did is underneath where the rail is running, I put five hoppers that are pulling the stone out of the hopper mine cart. I don't want to do a comparator setup because I feel like it's going to pause for too long while you're constantly mining stone uh, or cobblestone. So I, I would rather just have as many hoppers as possible, pulling it along that line and into the chest. I think that's going to be the easiest way to prevent uh, backup in those lines and in the chest itself or in the hopper mine cart itself uh, as everything tries to get over to the chest. Uh, again, this is super simple to make in your early world. The, the, even this pickup system is, is advanced for what it needs to be. You could set this up. You don't even need to have a block underneath this. You could set this up, have an air gap, and you can have a water flow going towards you, and all the blocks will just end up at your feet. And then you can pick them up as you're done, or they'll probably come into your inventory as you're going. I'm like, it, it is the easiest farm to make. I'm like, it, it's potentially even easier than these farms here uh, you know having to go and figure out the layout and everything like that i'm like all, all you need is a bucket of lava a bucket of water a set of stairs which you can make out of anything and um just a, a structure to hold it all in that that's really it um just make sure that if you are playing with fire tick on that you build out of something that is non-wood uh, corners are fine because it can't touch it but you have the glass here which is fine you've got the stone here which is fine you know nothing's gonna light on fire or burn down uh, i broke a block up here earlier um but yeah it, it is so simple one thing you could do as well to make it easier for yourself if you want to stand here in mine for quite some time um, I do recommend putting some type of barricade behind you just to make sure that, you know, no monsters comes walking up behind you when you're not paying attention. But if you go into your settings, go to keyboard and mouse, you have your hotkeys here. Well, there's the one here for attack slash destroy. Button one is the left button on your mouse. You could change that to another button. Let's say it's one that you don't have already assigned to something else. So let's see. So for mine, let's do L. Okay, we're gonna do L. So now I can stand here, I can stare at this block, and if I just hold down L, so simple. I'm like I, You don't have to worry about moving your mouse, you don't have to worry about holding down the key, I'm like, you can just set your finger on it. If you have an auto clicker, I'm like, you can set it up to automatically, you press the L key once and it'll just go for you. Um, but it just depends on, on how far you want to go into it. Again, this isn't a farm that you're probably going to use a lot unless you're maybe in a skyblock world, but you can just kind of go, go, go. All I'm doing is holding down the L key right now. I don't have to touch my mouse. I don't have to do anything. It works great. Okay, just to give you another example of a way that you can get blocks out of here, especially if you're going to be going for a long time. The minecart was moving a little bit slow, so I tried something different. I basically made a line of hoppers. Um, so with the hoppers, what's going to happen here is that they're going to pull down through all the way down. So I have, there's the five hoppers here directly beneath the cobblestone. And then there's five beneath that, five beneath that. And then a whole line that leads over to this double chest here. So, uh, it's been emptying while I was talking and, and right after I set it up here, cause I just finished setting it up. But if I was to stand here for a second and mine away at the uh blocks for a little bit so let's build up just a, a bit here the minecart was only pulling out about two at a time and the after i don't know three minutes of 
um, mining away at this, I, I had probably 10 stacks going. Uh, it just wasn't moving fast enough for the uh, blocks to be able to pull th through in the cart itself. So I switched it to the hopper line so we can watch and see how quickly the chest is filling up as it pulls everything through. Watch this. See, and so now it's just going to be a steady stream of pulling it in. Maybe that's all I got. Maybe it was already filling up so fast as I did it. Now that I have been here for a moment, just to see how much this built up, I want to see where we're at. Yeah, okay. So that, this is, is filling in much steadier now. So yeah, we've got quite a few blocks coming through. This will fill up fairly quickly as I'm going. So there really is no backup or anything like that. I mean, look at this. I've, I've only been mining for total up to five minutes, maybe. And we're already at almost at uh, half a double chest or one full chest. So that's pretty crazy. This would be a whole shulker full. So I could I can make a whole shulker full of cobblestone in uh, about five minutes. Uh, I think we'll probably sell them for three diamonds a piece, maybe four, just depending on how popular they are. Um, but we can do it for cobblestone and then we can do the regular stone, smooth stone. You know, and then we'll have granite, andesite, diorite. You know, we'll go down and we'll mine. We'll get deep slate. You know, we can't auto farm everything, but this at least takes a lot off of our plate. Plus, it makes it where we don't have to, you know, run around and go and demolish our mountain to get the stone that everybody needs and eventually make ourselves homeless. Um, but yeah, this will be easy. Oh, I did put doors here on the back too. It's got two entrances depending on where people are coming from. But yeah, well, our. I would say that our uh, cobblestone generator is up and running and effective. So we are all set on that project. Uh, next is our iron farm. See, look, we got a few blocks up here. Or how many we got up here, but toss us in there. So next is our iron farm. So we can head on over and get started on that. Okay, here in my test world, I've made two different versions of this. So we have the one above ground version, which is the one that I'm going to use. If you're going to use the above ground version, one major thing you need to remember is to put non spawnable blocks around. So whether you do bottom slabs, whether you do glass, leaves, whatever, um, you just want to make sure that you put something here. That way the golems only have one place to spawn, which is going to be inside your platform here. Um, so what you have here is you have two sets of beds. So there's five on each row here. And so 10 on each side, the villagers are going to sit on this level directly above the beds. It doesn't really matter where they are, like which bed they actually end up linking to or anything like that. Cause they're not going to be able to be moving around. And then, um, these are going to be knocked out and you're actually going to just have your workstations here. You want to make sure that you do workstations that can work in the rain, that they don't have to like do anything specific with it. Um, so I, I found out the fletching tables or cartography tables or, uh, the looms for the shepherds. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay. And then, uh, what you're going to have is then a platform not made out of glass because you want to make sure that the golems can actually spawn because golems cannot spawn on glass. Um, so you want to use something like a, a some type of brick, stone, whatever. Just This is just so you can see. But the golems will spawn up here onto that platform. And then they will get pushed over into a corner where there's lava by one water bucket over here on this corner. And then um, it can drop into a hopper and you've got storage. Uh, so let me show you here what it looks like if you do it inside a structure. So this is the easiest way to do it is just mine out inside a structure. It takes a little bit longer to prep, but overall it's easier. Um, so how it looks here, as we can see. So you've got your floor here. You've got 20 villagers up there all connected to these workstations. Make sure you don't have any other workstations or beds in the area. You know, the usual villager uh, nonsense that's needed. Uh, and then you have the floor up there, which is going to be for the golems to actually spawn on. Uh, make sure that for your storage room, which, you know, this is just a single double chest. You'll want real storage in here um, that you use non spawnable blocks as well. Otherwise, the golems will try to spawn in here instead of up on the platform. But you can hear that I've already got one going right now. See, 
And so they will spawn up on this platform. The water pushes them over here into this lava block, which is being held in place by the tombstone buttons. And I have a fence down there. Um, if you are in a world with fire tick on, make sure that you use like a glass pane or something instead, just to stop the lava from going down directly on top of the hopper and burning the items. Um, but the drops get collected into the hopper there and they'll go into your double chest uh, or whatever storage system you have set up. You can have a sorter or whatever you want down here on the floor. But as you can see, like it works pretty well. I've done AFK uh, a bit at the one that I actually have built in our mine rock and world. And I mean, it generates uh, plenty of iron to be able to create our buckets and stuff like that. That way we don't have to um, always worry about buying it and everything like that. I do have a pack on that turns the slimes black. Uh, I'm sure somebody's going to notice that and make a comment. So I just want to point that out. It is a, a, a mod pack or a texture pack that is in uh, or that I have downloaded. I have that set up in the real mind rock and roll as well. Um, I did set up a little chest here, just kind of give you an idea, 20 beds, building blocks, a light source just to be safe. And then, you know, 20 villagers, your lava and water bucket, clutching tables, buttons and the glass pane. So it's really simple. If you'd like for me to do a little bit more in depth, uh, version of the build, I'm happy to do that. Just let me know and I can make a, a video for it. Um, let me know down in the comments below, but this is a compact iron farm no trading hall needed very simple to set up very easy to build and not a lot of resources required here we are at the actual iron farm in our world as you can see there's been a little bit of time since my last recording uh, i did go ahead and upgrade my items to netherite and same as last time uh in between recordings we had a nice death so i spent some time having to go back and get some stuff i had everything netherite and then i lost it to uh, a wither skeleton in a fortress. He ran off with my armor, got that back, but I ended up losing a couple picks and my ax and shovel. Um, but as you can hear, there is a golem going in there right now. The items are gonna pop through here really quick. Uh, they are flowing through this hopper line into this double chest here. I do have this chest to lock sometimes. I just wanna make sure that the items aren't getting too backed up in here if I'm gonna get AFK for a long time. Uh, but then they get pulled all the way down to a storage room that I have over there. I know this isn't the most effective. I'll, I'll get it set up with um, probably a, a water line or something like that, you know, going forward. But th this is just what I had access to at the moment where I could just set these up really quick as, you know, I, I had a bunch of iron. So it was nice and easy. Uh, but we got our villagers inside. I actually ended up using a mix of the uh, fletching tables and cartography tables. I didn't want to use all of the same thing. That was... Okay, anyways, um, and so I have that set up here. I did put some slabs up here on the top because I did use bricks as the uh, building block. So I put some bottom slabs here just to stop the golems from trying to spawn up here. I made myself a little platform up here, which also has slabs on top, just so I can AFK safely. And uh, if you couldn't see it here, the ground is actually covered in a lot of uh, the slabs. So I, I have it going for quite a ways here, but there's slabs covering this whole area. Um, just to stop the golems from being able to spawn down here, uh, spawn proof a little bit for monsters. I do get some monsters that spawn in. I think they're coming from like over here area. Uh, they'll spawn in, they'll come walking over and they'll just all hang out right around here at this corner. Um, so once I'm done going AFK, I peek down just to see, I usually have a few creepers and zombies. So I just jump down, kill them all and then, um, move on with everything if i do have this locked um i just go and double check it unlock it send them down that way um but overall it's easy simple and as you can tell look at that it's very effective like the golems just spawn in you stand here afk for a while you'll have plenty of iron in no time and it's a lot less work than setting up villagers for trading and stuff like that so if um setting up an iron farm especially in bedrock it just seems so um I don't know, aggressive, you know, it, it's something that's uh, too cumbersome to handle. Go with this for now, set up the iron farm this way. You could always set up a separate trading hall in another area, you know, make it work for you. But this, this is the best here. See, the cats die easily. You can string and stuff like that. It's, it works great for the purpose that's needed. Um, but this is where I'm going to go ahead and call the episode, guys. We've got this set up and going. We're going to keep our shop going and everything like that. But I appreciate you guys coming out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Um, I appreciate everybody coming out and watching the video. But thank you guys very much. Shadow out.